tips for an effective eye exam and refraction in children. Taking a good history is always a challenge in children because you could have limited interaction with the child or family history may sometimes be difficult to elicit as other siblings may appear normal in contrast to the index case of the parents. You should always try to examine the other siblings. Treatment history again is difficult to get because the actual person providing the treatment may be different from the informant, so ask for records. Also, parents may often misreport compliance, particularly for example with the patching therapy. Let us move on to examination. The most challenging part of a pediatric eye examination is the refraction. One has to be patient. The retinoscopy is our best friend here. You could use portable auto refractors or photo refractors, but they have their errors. The appropriate cyclopedia is important, such as atropine or cyclopentylate in the smaller children, particularly children who have got esotropia, and you can use uh, homotropine in slightly older children. Look for the head posture or external adnexa at a time when the child is not conscious, maybe typically when he's just walking in. Boom. For evaluating the ocular alignment, look for a cataract and the lenticular opacity is a distant direct microscope. The fundus evaluation in children is made easier with an indirect ophthalmoscope. An examination under anesthesia may be needed to screen the periphery. Specially prepared diluted diluting drops may be used in very small children. The intraocular pressure measurement in children is often not needed non-contract tonometry or you can do a Perkins tonometer but an easy one these days is to use the tonopen or the eye care tonometer. More special tests such as stereoacuity can be done using the two pencil test or the or using Lange stereoacuity or the Frisbee Davis distance 2. All these tests are easy for a child to understand, comprehend and respond to. Thank you for your patient listening. <laughs> So, uh, th uh, thank you. thanks, of course, to Digvijay that he uh, presented. Uh, uh, of course, it finished a wee bit early, so if there are any points, one or two, which we could make or any queries that you would have. He raised the point of uh, dilatation. So, the key importance to remember that in all cases of esotropia, particularly uh, even in young children and even teenagers, especially if they are recent onset, you must, the first refraction must be under atropine. However inconvenient it may appear, the first refraction should be under atropine. Ointment is preferred, especially in young children. Uh, in older children, you could consider drops, but uh, because of, uh, they may be messy, but uh, ointment in younger children because the risk of uh, excessive dozing, and of course the longer stay in the eye, by which you can actually have a sustained effect of the atropine. So we advise three times a day for three days for the baseline first refraction. So any refraction, first line refraction, one would advise in fact in a younger child up to seven to eight years, the first refraction irrespective should be under atropine, but definitely for esotropes and of course esotropes any age. We generally do not prefer cyclopentulate because of their uh, definitely reported neurological signs. And just in case if you are considered considering, it may be important that you keep the child under observation for a little while in your OPD because the children are known to have s neurological side effects or behavioral abnormalities which can uh, you know, be very disturbing for the parent because he co he's come for an eye exam and finding the child behaving unusually may be an issue. So uh, that those are very, very important things. Dr. Digvijay has listed out all the things that can be done in the first eye exam, but all of course are not necessary. The important thing is to remember that the first, and that's what uh, uh, and uh, something I follow in my clinic, that the first exam should be an extremely happy one for the child. So do not struggle to get his vision. If possible, prefer not to dilate unless it's an important, it's you know urgent or they cannot come back. My usual working uh, routine would be that the first eye exam would be a general exam, understand the complaints, try and reassure the patient and give them a plan of what I am 
uh, wanting to do in the subsequent visits. Whenever I need or if I, and more often than not, you would need a dilated exam, especially for refraction. Uh, to put the blame on those uh, bad eye drops, I ask the parents to put the drops and of course if it's an atropine ointment at home so that the child does not associate the unpleasant experience of the dilating drops with me. And uh, of course the parents put it when the child comes next time we plan for the refraction. So uh, like I said, first time uh, try to make it a pleasant experience. Most children are, uh, you know, think of doctors as pediatricians and remember doctors as uh, those vaccinators who keep poking needles or drawing blood. So we don't want that impression and we don't want uh, non-cooperation, especially taking vision. And again, one thing you'll remember, you should remember, it's not necessarily the vision may be subnormal. The children will read a few lines and then just sit down and relax and think that, you know, I'm, my job is done. So you may actually have to coax or maybe do a couple of repeat exams, uh, visual assessments to test for the real vision. So we'll probably go on to the next talk by Dr. Suma and maybe keep coming back and forth as we'll see how specific uh, uh, tests or specific examination techniques are there in each and every specific uh, disorder of, uh, pediatrics, uh, of pediatric ophthalmology.